Welcome back to Coding Shorts. I'm Sean Wildermuth. Today I want to start my plan for recording some of these videos about .NET Aspire and what it really means. So a bunch of people have some great videos out here, and I'll probably actually put them down in the show notes that cover the basics. It's sort of how you add it to a project, what it is, what version of Visual Studio you use, all that. I want to really dig a little deeper. But before we can talk about Aspire, we've got to talk about open telemetry. So that's what we're going to be covering today. I also want to just a quick note, liking and subscribing really helps me. And I'm also working on some new projects. I just wanted to add that I do do work directly with clients. I can do code reviews, architectural reviews, or even help you with component design and teaching. So if that's of interest to any of you out there watching, please reach me at sean.wildemuth.com. Let's get started. So I'm in a small little project that I've been using for a lot of my demos, a little address book. And I have this running in the background. This is just a list of addresses and I can edit or add a new address. Really simple stuff. I want to focus on the kinds of things that I might want to know about my app and know about how it's being used by certain people. And one way to do that is with this idea called open telemetry. Now what is open telemetry? So telemetry is effectively the kinds of data we want to know about an application. How high the CPU is, how many hits a minute, how many interactions with users, all sorts of data that you can accumulate about your application running. That includes things like error handling and logging and tracing, as well as events that you might want to handle with these things called meters. Open telemetry is a way to say, I'm going to expose this in a common way so that it's going to work across a bunch of different providers. One of those providers is going to be Aspire, but also you're going to see a bunch of open telemetry support in a lot of these monitoring applications that you might be using. Before we can do that, we really want to get in and take a look at how I would add it to an ASP.NET project. First thing I'm going to do is add a couple of packages. So here's my small project. I'm going to go into the API project because that's where I'm going to be able to add my packages. Now I'm just going to use the command line to do it. If you see some of the stuff I'm doing with the command line and I'm interested, I'll actually leave a link up here to my last video where I talked about some secrets of using the CLI. But I'm going to say .NET add package. And what I'm looking for is open telemetry extensions hosting. That's the first package you're going to need to support open telemetry. And there's also a special package that adds instrumentation for ASP.NET. So I'm going to say open telemetry instrumentation ASP.NET Core. So with those two installed, I can actually start to add this in. First thing I'm going to do is here in my program.cs, I want to add open telemetry to the project. And I'm just going to come in here someplace and I'll do it uh, after my mapster maps. I'm just going to say builder.services.add open telemetry and that will add the sufficient pieces for open telemetry but we're going to want to do actually a little more we're going to want to say i want open telemetry and i'm going to use certain things with them we're going to start with this idea of called metrics so i'm going to say with metrics and this is going to have a configuration or an options object whichever way you want to think about it where we can configure what metrics so we're going to say add asp.net core instrumentation and if we build this and run it again, nothing's really changed, right? All we're doing is saying that we have some metrics in our application that we care about, and that if someone wants to listen, they can. And so there's really these two parts. There are providers that are going to collect that information, and there are listeners or exporters, as they're called in open telemetry, to know where to send these pieces of data. Most of these exporters and other parts are packaged as NuGet packages. So back to the command line, and this time I'm gonna add package open telemetry, the exporter console. I'm just going to add an exporter that'll just shoot the stuff into the console. So as it gets information, it's going to then show it directly in the console. Let's stop that again. And after that configuration, we can just use add console exporter. Now, all this does is say, I want the metrics that we can have about our application, and I just want to spit them out into the console. So let's run it again. 
and here's my application. And you'll notice that not a lot has actually happened in here, right? But we're starting to get some of that te telemetry and this telemetry information can be quite big. So this is how long an average connection is. This is the protocol version. There's all this stuff that is automatically exported because we included the ASP.NET Core instrumentation. Now this is an awful way to, to look at it and it's gonna to continue to spit these out, spit these out. So how can we actually use this before we talk about actually using it somewhere? So I'm gonna create a meter class because I wanna actually capture something that isn't just about the web server working, right? And that's what a lot of the ASP.NET Core stuff does. So I'm gonna call it meters entry meter. Now this class is just going to report some information about the entries API as it's used. Now you don't have to put this in a class, you can write it in. I just like it to be nice and clean and something I can go ahead and I like that it's alone in case we need dependency injection or anything. That All that stuff is in one place. And I'm just gonna start with a simple constructor here. And we're not gonna need to inject anything quite yet, but if we go back down to program, let's go ahead and just add builder.services dot scope entry meter we're going to actually need to use this when we get to our entries api but before we do that let's go ahead and expose some things first i'm going to expose an actual meter object i'm just going to call it the meter and i'm going to say get and private set because it's going to be created when we call the constructor here and this will be in system.diagnostics.metrics. These are metrics that are implicitly part of ASP.NET, not just about open telemetry, but the way that the instrumentation works, is it'll take these meters that you create and then expose them through that. So let's bring in that namespace. And I'm gonna have a counter that just has a integer as a type of counter it is. And I'm just gonna call this my reads counter. And again, get private set. And I also need a meter name, and so I'm gonna actually expose this so I can use it in some other places. So it's gonna be a public static read only string meter name. Let's call it address book dot meters. So it's a lot of fluff to have us come here, but let's go ahead and create these in the constructor. I'm gonna create a new meter. And I need to give it a name because this name is going to be important when we see it actually working. And I'm, of course, going to call meter name because I already specified that. And just give it a version. I'm just going to call this our 1.0 version of this meter. And then the same way, reads counter, I can create it by calling the meter dot create counter. Now, this is maybe a little confusing because I've called them the same thing, the type as well as the member. But this meter that I've created here, it's not a static member of the meter class. I'm gonna tell it I want it as an integer, and then it needs a couple of different things. First, it needs a name for it, and I'll call it entry.reads for lack of being very clever. And then I'm just gonna give it a description so that when this is being exported someplace, it'll use this to tell them what it's about. It counts the number of reads of any entry, or whatever you wanna call it, right? And that's all we need to do, right? Now that we have this meter and more importantly counter, I can go ahead and inject it. So let's come down into my get entry, which is just pushing in a single entry. And I'm gonna put in our entry meter here and bring in that meter. And all I'm gonna do down here is say, you know, if we're reading it and it has succeeded, so it's not found, I'm about to return it. Let's go ahead and just say meter.reader counter add one. We've read it once, so we're gonna go ahead and capture that as a tick to go ahead and show, let's say, on a dashboard or something. Now that we have this, we're gonna actually need to include this in the things that are exported. So all the way back to program.cs, and we're actually going to add meter. Big surprise there, I'm sure. And all I'm gonna do is give it the meter name, which is why I made it a static, and it'll start to use that. And if we run this, and let's go ahead and look at some of these. If we look up to where the diagnostics are, you'll see our address meters here, and the value is six. We looked at six of them. And as we continue to do that, that meter will go up, and that way it can figure out how many reads, let's say per hour, per five minutes, or per second, whatever it is. It's something that we're telling it to count in certain increments. So that's all fine, but the console, the console is an awful place. And you can look on the internet. There's a bunch of monitoring services you can use, but I'm already using Azure. 
So I'm going to open up my portal. And this is an application insights instance that I use. Now, what's important here is you might have a lot of different applications with their own application insights. You might have one for everything, but this is just a quick way to see how this stuff actually works. Now your version will be a little different, but you need to get this connection string. So I'm gonna copy that to the keyboard and I'm not gonna go how to create an application insights instance. The important part is there's a bunch of different ways to monitor this stuff and Aspire happens to be one for development time, but we'll get to that in a future video. So the first thing we'll need to do is actually .NET add package and the package is called Azure Monitor .open telemetry .net core. Now this is specific to Application Insights. So if you're using some other monitoring service, this is gonna be a different package. So we've included it there. And there's two things we need to think about. First, once we call OpenTelemetry, we now have a method called use Azure Monitor. Bring in that namespace. And then we can just say connection string equals builder.configuration, and then some key. I'm obviously not gonna just put it in text here. I have it, actually have it in a environment variable so that I can hide it from you good folks. And in fact, I'm gonna get rid of the console exporter just so we don't have the noise. We're just gonna be exporting directly to this Azure monitor. And what's interesting is we don't need to add exporters here because this piece is basically middleware into open telemetry to say, if you're using things, go ahead and send them to Application Insights. So let's run this. And let's use our bunch of things just so we have some data in there. So we go back to the portal and in Application Insights, we can go to just the application map. We can actually see that we have this instance, which is our application running on my machine, going to a database on my machine. And it's showing the speed of these calls. That's the standard ASP.NET stuff. If we come down here to metrics. One of the namespaces is this Azure Application Insights, right? This is the way we're doing it. And we can see a bunch of things that are standard about how ASP.NET works. I could do requests or duration, but I'm gonna actually use entry reads. If you remember, that's my custom piece. So you can see that the average is about nine and a half. Let's look at the total count. We can see that it hit right here when we launched this, that we had a peak. And so we start to look at that data like max, the max is a 16 that we've ever collected on this based on that time frame. And so you can see this way to use OpenTelemetry to send data about how your application's running in a pretty simple way. So the idea here isn't to try to teach you OpenTelemetry. It's to get you interested in what it's trying to do. And that is allow you to have information you're gathering about an application, maybe about how it's used, how it's performing. You know, you can imagine query length, you could include statistics from SQL Server or whatever data store you're using in order to monitor your application live. There's also this notion of these things called traces and traces are when something happened, do I have a bunch of information that happened before and after as sort of a package to see when we had, you know, dropped connections, why that was happening. And so this can get kind of complex, but I'm trying to boil it down to the bare minimum, just to get you noticed. If you've looked at Application Insights before and this open telemetry thing is very confusing to you, that's because until recently, Application Insights had its own sort of connector to put the stuff in. And now they're adopting open telemetry as the standard way. They're deprecating the old way. Doesn't mean it's gonna go away right away, but it certainly is something that you wanna keep your eye on. Open telemetry, I think, is going to be the natural way because you can set up everything the way you want. And then if you decide to change providers or you want to monitor different applications in different ways for different clients, it's just a matter of how you wire up the plumbing. Make sense? So we've gotten this far. I want to say thank you. We're almost reaching 15,000, which when I look at a lot of YouTubers feels like not a lot, but I really appreciate everyone who's actually watching these videos. I'm learning stuff new, and this is giving me the opportunity to sort of talk about it in these short spurts, and hopefully we're all learning together. 
if you have any questions about this, if you want to see the demo project and grab it, you're going to be able to get that all in the description as well as go ahead and comment on this video and I'll do my best to answer any questions or concerns or maybe I missed something and you have some way to enlighten me and the rest of the people watching this video. So I encourage you to do that. Again, a tiny plug for my company. I can help uh, companies with reviews and architect and writing code and different things that you might need in your organization. So feel free to reach out, sean.wildnews.com. The link is here on the screen. And I'll see you next time on Coding Shorts.